Hey guys, I'm Mel, and today I'm going to do another Top 5 Wednesday. <laughs> top 5 Wednesday was created by Lainey over at Ginger It's Lainey, and I'm going to leave her link and the Goodreads group on the description, so you can check them out if you want to join. As you can see, today is a very special Top 5 Wednesday. I'm obviously trying too hard, and that is Halloween recommendations. Now, I love spooky stuff, um, but I don't read a lot of spooky books, but I managed to gather five books that I can share with you so you have some reading material on Halloween. Number five in my list is Hip House by Edward Carey. This is a book that I read last year and I haven't heard much about it in book two. This is not like a super scary book per se, but it does have some Tim burton -y feeling, like some mysterious gothic feeling um, which I really really enjoy. It's about this family who lives in this heap of trash outside of London. Like very weird things are happening in this house and everything changes when a new maid comes to the house and, and the main character takes an interest in her. The thing is that the main character can hear objects talking. I know that that doesn't make a lot of sense but once you read it, you will know what I mean. It was really, really enjoyable, really mysterious, and it does have like this portrait at the beginning of the chapters, and they are kind of spooky, kind of, kind of weird. Number four is a book that I finished this morning, and <laughs> that is A Madness of the Script by Mindy McGuinness. I talked about this in my previous video. This is a book about a girl who lives in an asylum, but you know those asylums like in the Victorian era, they thought that people were crazy only because they had some disease or they had some problems in their lives and they did these experiments on them like throwing really cold water because they thought that the brain was overheating or they cut the head so the brain could breathe they took out parts of the brain that they thought were not functioning or something like that well the, her family put her on the asylum because she got pregnant but the thing is that the circumstances of her pregnancy are very disturbing and she has like this kind of post-traumatic stress so she doesn't know if she's actually crazy or if or she or if she's just having a terrible time so this entire book is super super creepy it's kind of horrible what the characters of this book go through the pe people's lives are horrible um, everything is terrifying but in a very real way you know it doesn't have any ghost or any like supernatural creatures but it does have like a gothic atmosphere so I would totally encourage you to read this now or at any time because it's really really good but you have to be in like the right mood to read this book because it's kind of dense number three is The Sacred Lies of Mino Bly by Stephanie Oakes. This is about the girl who used to live in a cult where she did something wrong and they cut both of her hands. The thing is that after that she did something wrong and they put her on jail for young people, you know, like and as the previous one, this does not have like spooky stuff per se, but it does have mysterious stuff. Like you're during the entire book you're wondering what happened to her and, and the time changes and sometimes you hear about her past and sometimes you hear about her present and both are kind of terrible and the cult is super scary. She lost her life and her ability to trust and her family and everything that she had. Number two is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. When I was doing this list, I immediately thought about anything by Neil Gaiman. He has this kind of mysterious writing. It's about this kid whose family got murdered by this serial killer, but he lived and he was taken by the graveyard people, you know, ghost, and the caretaker of the graveyard too, and they raised him, so he lives there. And the murderer is looking for him and trying to get the job done of killing the last member of that family. This is a super dark book but it does have like funny parts. I always think that Neil Gaiman is going to be one of those authors that people study in the future because he writes 
so so well this is super captivating and it has like a super spooky atmosphere and the illustrations by Chris Roydell are super beautiful and, and kind of scary as you can see here and here and with that I also want to recommend Coraline because this is super scary too if you watch the movie and got scared this is scarier <laughs> and also the illustrations are crazy <laughs> and number one is The Diviners by Liva Bray this takes place in New York in the 20s it's about this super diverse and amazing cast of characters who have like these powers and they are called the diviners there are these murders and this mystery that they are trying to solve as well as a lot of another stories the part of the murderer and them trying to solve that with their powers and just looking for clues and everything is super super interesting and super exciting it does have like scary stuff it all gets better with the new york atmosphere and the 20s atmosphere the characters are super amazing and super interesting and super multi-dimensional and the writing is amazing anyways those were my halloween recommendations tell me some recommendations so i can spend halloween reading weird stuff <laughs> i should read more scary stuff so yeah hope you have a great day hope you liked it if you did subscribe and i'll see you when i see you bye